As we continue to move across the periodic table to review or to examine atomic structure and quantum mechanics, the next element that I would like to look at is in fact nitrogen. Nitrogen is a nonmetal which has an atomic number of seven. And in this case, we're going to use an isotope that has a mass number of 14. Keep in mind that you always identify the mass number or use the mass number to identify a given isotope of an element. So we will call this particular isotope nitrogen 14. The seven represents the Z value, which is also known as the atomic number, which is equal to the number of protons, which also equals the number of electrons in a neutral atom, which in this case is seven. The 14 represents what we affectionately refer to as the A value, which is the mass number, which is equal to the sum of the protons plus the number of neutrons, which have no charge, that consist of or make up the nucleus of an atom. So we can say already that this particular isotope has seven protons and one shortcut to determine the number of neutrons is to subtract the atomic number from the mass number and 14 minus seven is equal to seven. So we can safely say that this particular isotope has seven neutrons and thus its mass number is 14. It's important to consider the placement of nitrogen on the periodic table. It's a member of row two, also known as period two, because it has enough electrons to start filling the second energy level of an atom. We also say that it's affectionately positioned in column 15, but more importantly, from my perspective, we say it's a member of group 5A. The Roman numeral gives you insight into how many valence electrons it has, as well as the arrangement of those valence electrons. And there is no official family for the family that nitrogen is in. However, since it's at the top of column five, or column 15, or group 5A, we name it after itself and say all the elements in that column are from the nitrogen family of elements. That being said, for each element on the Meet the Elements lab, I want you to diagram out the AELD. You do so by constructing a box to represent the nucleus the top, uh, divide it in two and the top part of the box represents the number of protons or positive charges and the bottom box represents the number of neutrons or neutral charges which in this case is seven. So you can clearly see why the mass number of nitrogen 14 is 14 because it has seven protons and seven neutrons. Given that there's the same number of electrons as protons, we now have to place seven electrons in the energy level surrounding nitrogen. So according to Bohr's theory and quantum mechanics, the first energy level, which is the N equals one energy level or K shell, holds a maximum of two electrons. Once that energy level is full, you start placing electrons on the second energy level. We pair up each of the first two electrons, so we have five more to place after the first energy level. So the next two are paired to the right, and then we're going to place one electron above, one to the side, and one below. By Hun's rule, Hun says that, I'm 
try to draw these circles here, that each orbital in a sublevel gets one electron before you pair them up. Sorry about that, that kind of went off a little bit at an angle, but I'm just gonna let it be. So this would be the second energy level or the L shell. Why didn't they start at A? I have no idea. But you can clearly see that the second energy level has five valence electrons. Two in the S, one in each of what we will later call the P sublevel. Um, and you can clearly see that it has two valence electrons that are paired and three that are unpaired. For each element, I want you to draw the electron dot diagram. Okay, I've got a spell. Diagram. Missed my A, sorry. Woo! Need to do that one over. But anyway, you include the symbol as well as the number of valence electrons. Okay, so those are your seven or five valence electrons for nitrogen. You don't include the first two electrons on the first energy level because those are ground state electrons that are not considered to be valence electrons. So the valence electrons are the valence are the electrons on the second energy level in this case. All right, I want you then to represent the orbital notation, which again is a way of noting the placement of electrons and energy levels and sublevels within the atom. So we diagram those out by examining the placement of electrons and energy levels that are consistently farther away from the nucleus and thus have more energy. So therefore, at energy level one, we know that there is one S sublevel that holds two electrons. Once the first energy level is filled, you start to fill the second energy level, which also has an S sublevel that holds two electrons. Once again, by Hund's rule, each orbital in a sublevel gets one electron before you pair them up. So since there's only one orbital in S sublevel, as soon as you place an electron in it, it's half filled and the rules allow you to place a second electron. Notice that both these electrons have opposite spins. One's considered to be clockwise, the other's considered to be counterclockwise because when you place two similarly charged objects next to one another, they tend to repel each other. So, so far we've placed four electrons and we have three more to go. The second energy level has a P sublevel, which we refer to as the 2P, one of which lies along the X, one that lies along the Y, and one that lies along the Z axis. By Hund's rule, each orbital in a sublevel gets one electron before you pair them up. So we can say that the first energy level is filled, but you can see the second energy level holds a total of eight, and the second energy level in this case is not yet quite filled. If we were to write the address of the valence electrons, we would do that using what's called electron configuration, which is noted on the periodic table. So the electron configuration of nitrogen would be written in this way. 1s2, practice with me, 2s2, and then 2p3. And you can see if you total up the superscripts, they sum to the atomic number. So by examining the electron configuration, you should be able to identify what element is represented by that electron configuration. Another way to look at that is to say that there are three electrons in a 2p sublevel, 
two electrons and a 2s sublevel and two electrons and a 1s sublevel. And it's important to note that these two electrons are 1s electrons and are represented in that fashion. Whoops, this is not a 1s. Are represented here, here, and here. The 2s electrons are represented here, here, and here. And the 2p electrons are represented here, here, and here in each of these diagrams. So that being said, I want you to develop a Cartesian coordinate diagram. Which, which again is the xy plane. So there's your x, there's your y. And again, the vertex represents the nucleus. Surrounding the nucleus, according to Bohr, is an energy level, the first energy level, which holds two electrons. Once that first energy level is filled, you start to fill the 2s, which is a spherical energy level as well. This looks like a two-dimensional circle, but you can visualize it as a sphere, which also holds two electrons. These are the 2s electrons here, 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 and there. And then you have to start including the p electrons. The p electrons appear in shapes that are dumbbell shapes, one of which lies along the X, one of which lies along the Y axis, and one of which lies along the, woo, it's not a very good Z this morning, Z. Need practice, practice, practice. So, this would be your Z axis. We're going to place one electron and this P orbital, one electron and that p orbital, and one electron and this p orbital. Why don't you pair them up? Because that breaks Hund's rule. Um, and that being said, that's nitrogen, um, which appears on your Meet the Elements lab. The next element we're going to look at is the element immediately to the right of it, which is sulfur.